Well, hello from Spain. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to our video, The Dirty Secrets of Waterless Separating Toilets and a review of the Separate Tiny. We installed our Separate Tiny Toilet in 2021 during the renovation of our camper truck. And aside from the month that Denny spent shipping across the Atlantic, it is the only, or primary, toilet that we've used for the last eight months. So I'd say that gives us the right to sing its praises and talk a little bit of shit about it. We are Ben, Rebecca, and Lucy. In 2021, we shipped our camper van, Denny, across the Atlantic to start a new life, exploring Europe. In addition to travel films, we are also producing educational and informative videos about life on the road. And welcome to one of those videos. Before getting started, we're making this video easy for you to navigate. Look below and you will see chapters that will take you directly to those nitty gritty points you're looking to learn about. That's right, buddy. You show that turd who's boss. The separate tiny toilet took the U.S. RV tiny home camper van seen by storm in 2021. The company is out of Sweden and released their products into the United States last year. What makes these special are they are completely waterless, similar to composting toilets, but they have some other special features that pretty much solve the majority of the issues that composting toilet users complain about. The best part of the separate tiny toilet for us was that in 2021, it wasn't on back order on Amazon, like all of its composting toilet competitors. Let's get started with the day-to-day -day use of this separating toilet. First of all, it is very sturdy and solid. There is no uneasiness when you sit down on this throne. The manual says you can get away with screwing it directly into the wall, but we opted to screw it directly into our floor as well. We have a stainless steel shower pan and a, a product called Marine Board. So we're not actually drilling holes through our uh, new shower pan. And we also did the same on the back wall. For a waterless toilet, I will say that it stays relatively clean. It's nothing like your normal toilet at home where you can clean it with water. It's different. Um, having said that, as long as you are not having bowel movements like a hippopotamus, but rather you're, you know, relatively civilized about your bathroom habits. <laughs> Goodness. It doesn't, uh, it does, it's, it's pretty good. It doesn't get too dirty. I will tell you Ben wanted to show you what it really does look like on any given day. And I was a big no for that. So it is clean, but it does need to be emptied right now. Turn it off! Well, the diverting feature of this toilet works pretty much exactly as you would expect it to. As you can see, Looks like a relatively normal toilet. Very comfortable toilet seat, I will tell you that. There are three points of pressure you put on this toilet, back here, here, and here. And when you do that, this flap opens. The things that are supposed to fall in the back fall in the back. The pee goes in the front. And when you stand up, the flap slams closed, and it's as if nothing ever happened in here. Hey, that, that sounds pretty nasty. How about a courtesy flush over there? As we all know, though, things do happen in this room. And if you also notice, there's no door where these things happen in our truck. So our very favorite feature that may make up for all of the features we don't necessarily think are thrilling. You can hear it right now. There's an exhaust fan. This exhaust fan sucks all of the air out all of the time from this toilet. So there's never an odor, ever, never, truly, genuinely, there is never an odor. And in 13 feet of space, that is a really nice feature to have. One thing we did do, and we're really glad we did, was install a little flip switch up on the ceiling or close to the ceiling of our bathroom that turns this exhaust fan on and off. So if we are away from the truck for long periods of time, we can empty the toilet, turn the fan off, and that exhaust fan won't run and wear down our batteries. Definitely like that feature too. Ah. Okay. 
Let's talk a little bit about the pee bottle or urine collection container. Rebecca showed you. Liquids go here in the front. And in the front, when the toilet came from the manufacturer, they gave us this little blue urinal puck. Thought that was fine. I thought it actually might snap into a place. No, this blue urinal puck just sits right in there. So every two days when we have to empty the liquids portion of this toilet, lift it up and oh wait no that blue urinal puck slid into here made this blue streaky mess and it was horrible now that blue urinal puck does serve a purpose because urine may be sterile but it does have a lot of crystals to it so you need to if you're not going to use that blue urinal puck keep your toilet clean and to prevent crystallization we opted to use a little bit of dish soap or sometimes we will use vinegar and Lucy's chasing a fly. That's what that noise was. Uh, we we'll use a little bit of vinegar, rinse it out really well. And you want to rinse it out really well because the uh, pee bottle has a sensor as to when it's getting full. And if you get too many crystals, that sensor will not float upwards. And then you have a mess all inside here because you overflowed the pee bottle it's only Ask happened twice how we know that <laughs> twice <laughs> once was because when you lift this up we put a little bit of toilet paper it's all clean now don't worry relatively speaking of course uh so you don't drip pee pee down there <laughs> but one time rebecca cleaned the toilet and <laughs> that little toilet paper got right in there got closed on it didn't work and the other time it happened we had a crystallized float so that's the way it works and i guess one of the uh, pros to the nature's head having a clear bottle <laughs> this one is solid the star of the show demanded that we plug her youtube channel and social media and since we're doing shameless plugs did you know we have another channel check it out for life's most memorable moments moving on to the next topic of the toilet cleaning it uh i could go on for a long time about this let's just say it's a challenge to clean. There's lots of nooks and crannies. You have to clean where the toilet goes up and down the seat. You have to clean underneath the toilet. You have to clean on top of the toilet. Um, it, ta it takes a good bit of time and you have to do it pretty often because there's no water. So without water, things actually stay where they get left, if you know what I mean. Um, so what we have found works best is just to have a spray bottle with the cleaner of your choice sitting beside the toilet and it gets used on a daily basis. Sometimes I even spray it after each use just to keep ahead of things. And I'll show you kind of a unique feature that makes this extra fun. Ben already talked a little bit about this gray capture contraption. Um, imagine having to pick up the urine puck that's been peed all over in order to empty the toilet every two days. That's just gross, which is why we don't use it. Uh, but however, this does have to stay on the in the toilet and well, long and short hairs get caught in it. We'll put it that way. And sometimes other things capture with them. So it can be a pretty gruesome job. I'll leave it at that. It's hard to clean. Uh, there's no ways around that. Without water, it's difficult. But uh, some of the other features of the toilet make it so that it's really nice to have in this kind of a living environment. So it's a give and take, like everything. Before we get into a real life emptying process of this waterless separating toilet, let's talk about the male's perspective on using it. First of all, you have to sit down to pee. That has its pros and cons, because sometimes you just got to pee, but then you sit down and like, oh, I feel something else going on. So you end up pooping more. I don't get it. But it is nice being able to stand up as a guy. And supposedly there are these like funnel attachments that people have made for different toilets. Not quite sure about that. But all I'm going to say is that sitting down is a reality. And sitting down you have to be careful when you sit down. You can't just sit down and go. You gotta make sure old Mr. One-Eye isn't on the rim of the bowl here because if you do that, next thing you know, you're peeing on your shorts. 
not a good situation. So you just gotta make sure you tuck everything in there. Some stuff is gonna touch. I've come to accept that's a reality of using this toilet. But other than that, I've never left a skid mark. Poo's never gone to the uh, liquids or anything of that nature. But my main gripe would be still gotta tuck your junk and Oh yes, and uh, Rebecca just reminded me, I love the fact that it's got a built-in fart sucker. So that little fan, you could be making the biggest mess in here. And it will just suck all the smell. It is spectacular. You have no idea how many years we put up with smelling each other's poop. It is tough, it is real, but now all we have to is listen to the audio of a toilet going experience. Well, obviously I get the uh, joy of sharing the female perspective of using this toilet. And if you can't tell by the fact that I can't look the camera in the eye, I don't like talking about my <laughs> bathroom habits on the internet. But <clears throat> for the sake of helping you pick the right toilet for yourself, I'm gonna make an exception today. So. As a female using this toilet, unlike Ben, who said he doesn't have trouble with things sometimes going in the wrong holes, I have had that problem more than once. Um, I tend to find myself sliding forwards and backwards on the toilet to make sure things go in the right place. Uh, I love the feature of the fan. It deafens the smell, it deafens the sounds, and for someone with a shy colon, <laughs> who couldn't go to the bathroom in here with Ben in the truck for the first six months we owned it. It definitely helps to be a little more comfortable in the, in the bathroom experience. Uh, and it just never ever smells. Basically, I really like the toilet. I like the way it looks. I think it's an extremely comfortable toilet. I think it's very easy to sit down and be comfortable while you're toileting. And my true only complaint is the cleaning feature just yeah but i don't think that's special to the separate toilet i think that that is a problem with waterless toilets and i don't really see too many ways around it so uh i give it a thumbs up for other than the way that it has to be clean Ooh, heavens to Betsy. so the pee bottle it's not completely full hence the red light is not on but it's full enough and for the sake of this video we're going to empty it for you but as you can see, we stuff a little bit of toilet paper because the toilet has since been used since we've cleaned it and you don't want any unnecessary drips. So the pee bottle is pretty easy to empty, easier with two hands. There is a cap that you can put on right now. Truth be told, most of the time I do not put the cap on for the walk to the dump. Let's go empty the pee bottle. One of the common complaints about the nature's head composting is that you're walking with a clear pee bottle. Big difference, this is solid. So yes, you're still taking your bottle of pee for a walk, but it's not quite so disgusting. So in this scenario in the campground, we are going to use the toilet and it is really easy to use a toilet to dump this. Uh, the cassette using a regular toilet was always your last resort. It was never the preferred method of uh, emptying it. But one thing I have learned over the years, so you get the juices flowing and then you flush the toilet. So it all just kind of keeps flowing and it does smell. It does smell very much like ammonia and urine, but it is what it is. What goes in must come out and it's still coming. There's that ammonia smell. Let's double flush. So it's very critical to give the pee bottle a rinse. And since we're here in the men's bathroom, I'm just going to use the shower. And you can say what you want about me using shower water. But I guarantee men have done worse things in this bathroom and me getting a little water from my pee bottle it's not one of them as i mentioned earlier keeping this bottle clean 
and free of crystals is critical, so we always give it a good solid rinse. And there's still residual dish soap in there from uh, when we uh, last used it, so it is nice and clean. I forgot to mention another thing. When dumping this, you do have the option of leaving this cap on, but if you take the cap off, the pea bottle dumps probably two or three times quicker. So this is just the rinsing contents. And if you look close towards the end, you'll probably see some of those crystals starting to come out. Yep, there's one of those crystals. You hear that? That means the float for the uh, level sensor is free. Back in our camper and it's a little squeeze of dish soap and the uh, pea bottle goes back in. You'll see that red light there, meaning it's not properly seated. And now it is seated. Crucial thing, move that little wad of toilet paper. And now you're back in business and ready to do number two. Your dad's not the master of all things. Yeah, I kind of got that when you started taking advice from morons. Yeah. Usually while Ben is emptying the pee bottle on days when we need to empty the number two area, I go ahead and get that ready while he's outside doing the other. Uh, we have found that the bag needs to be emptied about once a week. And uh, that's pretty good for two people using it as their primary toilet. So this lid simply comes up. It always sounds like you're gonna break it. You remove this yellow thing that holds the bag in place. And then you pull the bag up. Um, I always double close this. So I pull the handle handles up on the bag and then I also knot it just to be safe. And well, that's it for emptying it. You're finished. It's all right here. And amazingly that bucket stays super clean. As long as the bag doesn't yeah. leak, which we knock on wood have yet never to have happened. So I do have an extra liner bag in there that we never remove. We just always leave it just in case this bag gets a hole in it. We're not dealing with a huge mess in the bucket. Not nice. bad of luck. That's right. So we found that 30 liter bags work perfectly to fit in this bucket. And the big thing is just to tuck it all the way around. I really like these new bags that we found. They have a little elasticity at the top. So they hold it in place and that works really well. Um, once you've got the bag in place, this yellow piece goes back on top. And it always stays clean. I don't have to wash it. Slide that back down. It does always sound like that thing's breaking, but, and this is how that works. It just slides like this. And you have the toilet seat down. Boom. Well, hands are washed and we're ready to uh, wrap this video up. So what are the haters gonna say? Well, haters are gonna say, don't put human fecal matter into trash cans. I'm not, a expert at the legalities of this but we got a Swedish toilet so apparently in Sweden you can put your poo into a trash can but you look at the composting toilets and the composting doesn't necessarily happen in three weeks and that's usually about the time most people have to empty their compost toilet solids bin uh, yeah it controls the moisture and most of those people to boot they don't go and spread it out in nature or anything. They put that in the trash as well. So like I said, not an expert on poop in trash, but that means dog poop bags, diapers, and kitty litter also probably should not go in the trash. And if you are out in the wild uh, and you want to bury this, you can totally do that because it did come with 10 compostable bags. Now we're not in an area we're not going to go bury it in this campground we're going to dispose it properly in a plastic bag is what it is but for wild times there are compostable bags one final thought to consider with this separate tiny toilet is that it's in our wet bath uh, if that is a factor for you know that it is not watertight 
and we've gone through several attempts to remedy this issue. Uh, we had some leftover water resistant canvas from the making of our new dinette covers. My mom helped sew a piece made just for the toilet. Uh, it fit great, but the canvas ended up not being waterproof. Then we tried some plastic like vinyl and that was waterproof, but we couldn't get it to fit and sit and stay on the toilet. It always popped off. So uh, we were using a trash bag until a few weeks ago. Uh, we happened upon the rain cover for our camera bag and we tested it and it turned out that it is legitimately waterproof and fits on the top of the toilet. So it now lives here and we use it on the toilet whenever we take a shower. One more thought for the guys, you don't have to worry about leaving the toilet seat up because all there is is a lid. Uh, I want to add a little bit about this uh, fan that keeps the negative pressure and all the smells shooting outside the camper. Well, you have to route the ventilation pipes. We did not have too many options because we were renovating an existing bathroom space. So ideally we would have wanted to go straight up, but that would have hit solar panels. Uh, we wanted to go over a little bit further, but that would have had three 90 degree turns in a ventilation pipe and you're only supposed to have two. So we literally had no other option but to go down, over, down, and that put it out right in this front door area. So, not saying we stink, but we do want to blame it occasionally on, is there a feedlot in the area or is there horses over there? But if you walk up to our camper and you get a little whiff of something, and well, I'm not <laughs> gonna tell you right away, but it's our fecal matter that you're smelling. We had no other choice, but that's only if the wind is blowing the right or wrong direction. Well, I think that's a wrap for our dirty secrets of a separate tiny toilet. Thanks for joining us. Hope this was a helpful video for you. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more about the renovation that we did, be sure to check out our playlist. We really went deep into <laughs> renovating this truck. <laughs> for travels, we are kicking our way around Europe right now. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and keep up with us on the road. Thanks for watching. Don't nobody go in the bathroom for about 35, 45 minutes. Somebody open the window. <laughs>